people starting to come through. So what they got to start to do is to create different pockets of black stuff that they can control to engender how much knowledge of our history we get. This is when, in 1881, they had the Belgian Conference mm -hmm. and they decided that they were going to create what they refer to as Afrocentrism. And Afrocentrism was going to be a way wow. for them to be able to get into Africa. Because see, the difference between the United States and Britain was the United States would go in inroads in Africa and try to just act like they better, call everybody nigga, kill everybody, everything else. The British, they go in there, they want to give you money, they want to learn your language, they want to find <laughs> what your customs are, they want to know all of that, to get all the way in it, and then they aestheticize it. Mm -hmm. Then they say, oh, well, come back to Britain and you can set up like a little, you know, little Haiti or little Greece or little whatever. Right. And then once you do that now, you've split it up. So then they would go and they would say, okay, who's the king, who's the prince, who's the dejected uncle or heir? Whoever was the heir, they would go to the heir and not the king and say, look, you can get your own kingdom, man. Who mm. supply you with money? Who supply you with arms? All of that. This nigga's overlooking you. He gonna, like, he gonna make her a, a, a king or queen over you? You can't have that. They say, okay, you know what? White man, you right. Let me get them guns. They go over there, get rid of their own people. Then what the white men say, okay, now that I'm here, let's say between... um. The time of the Belgian Conference, 1881, to the first fight between Toussaint and Napoleon. Let's say between the fight with Toussaint and Napoleon all the way up to the establishment of the Belgian Conference in 1881, right? This period is when the, the Caucasian Freemason was starting to reach his ascendancy, but what they also realized is that they had to have some sort of spiritual or, or, or entity type of protection against us. Because Toussaint and them was doing stuff crazy. They was, they would do stuff like they, the French would come out on a patrol. And now when I say the French, I'm talking about the lighter skinned, quote unquote, mulatto people who were Franciscan. Because that's really the term, Franciscan Moors, who were sent from Napoleon. Because Napoleon was a Moor too. He was from a place called Corsica. If you look at the flag of Corsica... You see a jet black moor on it with a, with a, with a headband. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So they used to call him the Corsican, right? His brother-in-law, Morat, Morat, was darker than Terrence. You know, so when we talk about the French and the, and the uh, Haitians or the Haitians, we're talking about moors and moors fighting moriscos. You know what I'm saying? Darker skinned moors fighting lighter skinned moors. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That, for whatever reason, really popped off with them. But what these Moors would do was, with, with the Franciscan Moors, they would send their Caucasian slaves out to do a lot of the fighting. So the darker skinned Moors, Toussaint and them, would do stuff like bag them up, right, capture them, treat them real good, you know what I mean? But then like put a veve -ve on them and then send them back. So when they came back to the French and they'd be like, it was going on, you know, they would literally carve it into the dude. So they would think that the guy was possessed. You see what I'm saying? Because they didn't mm. speak that. So they used to do a lot of stuff like that. Like when it got real hectic, they would bag them up. They would literally skin these white men and women alive. They would skin them. And then hang, like in Predator, hang them from the trees and all of that. This is where they're getting all of this from. This is how we used to go. That's why Napoleon and them was so like, yo, I got to get out of this. So when Jefferson was like, look, I'll give you a bumper cat, he was like, great, take it, let's go. Because he knew that he wasn't going to win anyway. So long story short, this is when these Packers realized, look, they got a heavy spiritual thing with them that we can't even push through. So we got to have that for ourselves. Hmm. So what they decided to do was kidnap a bunch of voodoo priests. They kidnapped them, took them back to France, and then there was a sadist named the Marquis de Sade. Yes. And the Marquis de Sade who was a Luciferian or whatever, he tortured them, raped them and all types of stuff, and then got different names of different systems or whatever. And then from him, they created what we now today term modern Luciferianism or modern Satanism. It basically came from him basically taking this black African, Moorish, deep, dark matter, dark energy power, ancestral mm. power, mm. and then turned it on his head by using this using the goat 
as the focal point to bring the energy in because the goat represent what? Capricorn. Baphomet. Right? And Baphomet, right? But what also um, is the month for that? January. January the 1st. Right? The 1st, basically. The initiation energy. The initiation ritual. That's also, though, when the main, the, the main battle popped off between them. It was in a January system, which was a Janus system. Janus represent the double-headed god, right? So Baphomet now becomes a thing. So between, let's say, 1786 and 1821, you get the rise in Europe now, in France now, with this whole underlying satanic, you know, thing that is now chic now to get down with for the upper elite, because this is what the government did. They marketed it to the elite people because they could be the one to pay for the candles and the stuff like that, or the swords <laughs> and all of that. So they well, get them in. It's funny you say that, because a, a lot of the yoke, the Oh, I'm gonna get into them in a minute. Okay, because that's exactly I why I had to be yet. like, e We ain't even get with the Hindus yet, but. Not even that point, but I'm just saying the archetype that comes. Oh, yeah. I'm not trying to diss that, but no, I'm with you, either, I'm with you. We're we gonna get, we into, get into it. <laughs> so. They basically created that, and this is when it became a chic thing to wear like animal heads, and, like goat's heads, animal heads. They used to go to these animal parties where everybody dressed like an animals. They have the Lord of the Hunt, uh, the Wild Men of the Hunt, where they would uh, dress with like uh, moose antlers, and they would get on and they would they would chase the fox and all that mm -hmm. type of stuff. Um, so they doing this to to generate all of this energy. But then what happened was members of the Moorish nobility who was peeping game was going on started putting decrees against that. So we had to have a French Revolution to cut off all of their heads, see what I'm saying, to then do that. Who was down with that? Thomas Jefferson, right? Thomas Jefferson was a, a slave, right, who had a, a, a condescending infatuation with black men and black women. And he decided that he was going to be the one to kind of go over there and follow what the French side was doing because he and Washington and the rest of these niggas started getting down with this whole Luciferian thing on the low because this was a way that they all can congeal themselves together and shield it through the Freemasonry. So the god of the Freemason is Lucifer. You understand? But in the Freemasonic stance, Lucifer is actually seen as, the, as one of the three gods. It's a three-headed god system. Lucifer mm. is really there, right? Then there's Jesus, right? Who essentially betrayed Lucifer. This is how they flipping it. They're saying that Jesus betrayed Lucifer by not allowing, by not taking Lucifer's deal. Remember you gave him the deal? I give you all of this. If you do, yep. If you doing, if you kneel to me, Jesus was like, nah, I ain't doing that. They saying that that was Lucifer giving Jesus the out. <laughs> this is wow. how they looking at it. Giving him the out to not go through with the ritual. So in that, then God is the devil. You see what I'm saying? Who sent Jesus allegedly to do all of this. So God is the devil, Jesus is Judas, and Satan is God. This is where these niggas is at, right? So again, this is the Freemasonic thing that they're dealing with, right? But they won't put it out like that. What they'll do is they'll have the three pillars of masonry, which is liberty, fraternity, and justice, right? That's but, in the history of the Freemasonry books we have yeah, from the... Mackie. Yeah. That we have that. Yeah. yeah. So all of these things manifest and come that out, and sense. they use this Luciferian energy to consolidate them as white males around a uh, around a specific edifice of white supremacy, because they know that because they have been slaves of the old dominion for so long, we was never gonna free them. So the only way we could do it, matter of fact, we would lock them up in hills and in, in caves for thousands of years and forget them totally forget they was even there until people start telling stories about werewolves right werewolves and and sasquatch and yeti and wendigo <laughs> and abominable snowman and bigfoot this is the white man this is the neanderthal negro javaro araba super chimpanzee now in that negro that's one people right one black people with no knowledge of self araba Arabic, Philistine, Arabic people, Javaro, Indian, right? Dravidian, uh, excuse me, Hindu, Dravidian or whatever. Super chimpanzee, white people, white males. So 
this now becomes the the predominant that way sounds so horrible like that apes white man right. no i feel you i feel you that's what it is right the super chimpanzee i'm just saying emotionally i see why niggas think about it hurt. the so-called greeks was just as civilized as, as yeah. we are today and they lived two thousand years ago but if you was to take a person from ancient greek meaning a black man or black woman right and put them next to a chimpanzee from that time right they're mad far advanced from that chimpanzee but if you take a person from this time and put him right next to that chimpanzee he'll probably be on the same level so how can we say that we're actually pro see progress comes from human from the soul's ability to initiate new ideas hmm. that come from an organic place when there are no new ideas that come from a place that is totally organic, what happens is the technological, soulless aspect starts to move up. So because we have technology, mm. we think that we are progressed in a forward fashion. But if you watch the Jetsons, we're supposed to have been flying in cars and all of this stuff. You could watch the Flintstones and see that man existed at the same time as Dinosaur, but it wasn't a white man. And when it was the white man, he wasn't he he was like he was a 2001. Remember that movie, 2001: Space Odyssey, with the monkeys who was starting to jump around the black monolith. The black monolith, thats a symbol of us. So again, when we talk about the black Luciferian agenda that is starting to become more and more prevalent in our community, we're talking about something that goes all the way back had its had its beginning in our generation bloodline around the 1700s. And it came all about, like I said, based upon them realizing that they had no spiritual protection from us. So they decided to use the Baphomet head and all the satanic imagery and all of the other stuff, the black and the pentagram. How is it that if the pentagram is on the Moorish flag, right, that these dudes going to use put, it as a satanic flag? Can you draw the different flag, one? Right. So sorry. here go the Moorish joint. And just turns it upside down. Sorry. Right. <laughs> That's the Moorish flag, right? That's the Moorish flag. This is the satanic joint. You see? They got to bind it and close it in. This is fire, air, water, earth, gold. This is also a symbol of the woman. This is also a symbol of Allah. Arm, leg, leg, arm, head. Right? Is also a symbol, so that's the woman. That's like, the man. This is why I wear jeans all the time. Right. Why I even try to be a girl? That's the man. I mean, come on. This is the phallus. That's the vagina. You see what I'm saying? So the Jews, right? This is they. This is the star that they use. Yeah. So that means that they're coming from a patriarchal system. You understand? When they first came there. The first stone that Sesosteris or whoever was in charge stepped on, they said, we're going to take this stone, and this will be the stone that we signify our nobles on. So whenever a baby come to a baby noble come to come to age, they knight him and consecrate him on this stone. So there's been over how many thousands of generations that's been made kings Fine. and queens on this stone. So these crackers say, okay, we're going to steal the stone, and we're going to bring it to... To, to England and then we're going to put it under the throne of the king so that way when we make our king king right he'll, he'll basically be inherit. doing that and then we put all the Scottish Scotian people under our jurisdiction because we got their damn stone the same way that the British Museum got the nose of the Sphinx mm -hmm. the same way that what you call it got the um, same way Skull and Bones got, the, got Harriet Tubman's skull they allegedly got Ger Geronimo. Geronimo skull. They allegedly got Malcolm Mom. X's penis. penis. <laughs> they eventually got all that. This is the trophy room. This is how they do it. So the stone is there. Then show you how the devil can out devil the devil. Your man, the <laughs> Pope, came through, and then when the Church of England.